Hello Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That, Africa Wednesday. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about Cape Town, which is experiencing a severe drought. I know, right? Breaking news. Africa has a water problem? Who could have guessed besides everyone who knows what a desert is? That said, this is a much more significant problem than it sounds, and people are starting to get worried. The Western Cape continues to feel the pressures of the worst drought to hit that province in a century. From agriculture, construction companies and abattoirs to the top city hotels, industries are concerned about their business and their labour. Reports suggest that job losses are dooming. There's been talk of day zero, a time when the water could run out completely. Yes, day zero. And man, they couldn't have picked a less inspiring name if they had consulted with a grunge rock band. Day Zero is the trump of this conversation, meaning that no matter what you're talking about, it's always somehow relevant. So it's really important to have a good definition. Cape Town's water supply is largely supplied by six reservoirs, and Day Zero is the day when these reservoirs completely dry up. Well, what does that mean, I hear you ask? Well, this very cheerful government PSA has all the answers. Day Zero. On this day, the majority of taps throughout the city will be turned off. We've identified water collection sites across the city where you'll have to queue for your daily allocation of drinking water. Wow! Now I know what it would sound like if the person who voices pre-flight safety videos narrated the apocalypse. Now a quick reminder for those unfamiliar with Cape Town, this is not a small city in the middle of nowhere. This is about five and a half times larger than Seattle, and as urbanized as New York. So those lines are going to be long. Now that I view soiling your jeans worse than someone who just drank unfiltered African water, let's talk about how this happened. Well, welcome to the first episode of the new That's All I Have to Say About That game show, The Blame Game, where contestants will compete to figure out who caused Cape Town's water shortage. So let's meet our contestants. Coming up first, we have Jacob Zuma, president of South Africa, and a man so corrupt his checking account has been one of the largest government investments in recent years. Mr. Zuma, are you ready to play the blame game? I can't delay you more. All right, I'll take that as a yes. Second, we have mayor of Cape Town, Patricia Del Lille, leader of the Democratic Alliance, the largest opposition party to Zuma's African National Congress, and person most glad that Zuma is in power or she'd be in the running for most corrupt leader. Hello, Mayor De Lille. How are you today? I feel very honored to being invited here today. Well, thank you. It's an honor to have you on the show. Now our final contestant of the day, climate change and population growth, who unfortunately are abstract ideas and will be unable to defend themselves today. So President Zuma, we're starting with you. Who do you blame for Cape Town's water shortage? Well, according to Zuma's African National Congress MPL, Trudy Diajana, the Democratic Alliance failed to act on the decline of dam levels or implemented desalinization plans sooner, and even tried to cash in on emergency drought funds. Oh wow, coming out swinging. Now Major De Lille, do you have a defense? Well, according to her, as well as South African news publication News24, provinces don't have the power to make water allocations to agriculture. That's done by the national government. Yes, nothing bad will ever happen if you leave the only major city governed by an opposition leader's water supply in the hands of a government in perpetual investigations for corruption. At this point in South Africa, I think the main thing Zuma done to fight unemployment is to have so many investigations launched against him that if you're capable of speech, they need you over at the Justice Department. She went on to clarify that, over the last three years, she thinks the national government has way over allocated water to agriculture and ignored her pleas for help. Specifically, in response to low winter rainfalls in 2015, the provincial government took preemptive action and applied to national governments for 35 million rand to increase water supplies by drilling boreholes and recycling water, which was rejected. 
Then the following year, after another year of poor rainfall, the national government agreed to recognize only five of the 30 Western Cape municipalities as disaster zones. But not Cape Town. Then after a third year of reduced rainfall, on October 2017th, the national government had still not released the promised funds, and when the mayor of Cape Town appealed, she was told that Cape Town was not yet at crisis level. Oh wow, Zuma, unlike a certain vote of no confidence, you might not be able to get out of this one. Ooh, I'm sorry, but that buzzer means that's all the time we have today. Sorry you didn't get to talk about climate change and population growth, but everyone was just too busy attacking each other and defending themselves to mention you in this debate. It looks like today everybody lost. That said, I'll take a second to address these issues, as this three year drought period is considered the worst drought in Cape Town's recorded history, with Bloomberg reporting it as, three straight years of poor rain in Cape Town typically happens less than once in a millennium which is a long period of time. Now that does sound like quite the exaggeration. Bloomberg, what are you doing, trying to sell me a timeshare there? But three separate Cape Town climate scientists put their names behind this claim. There's another underreported problem that's causing this issue as well, overpopulation. According to South African newspaper Ground Up, since 1995, the city's population has grown 79%. And over the same period, dam storage has increased by only 15%. Now you don't have to be a mathematician to know that is not a good sign for long term sustainability. Now to end on a slightly optimistic note, what is Cape Town doing to avoid day zero? Well, a fun dose of authoritarianism light for starters. According to Circle of Blue, a newspaper that reports on water, Man, those editors must be the life of the party. Cape Town is introducing laws that would punish people who use too much water with fines or jail time. Ah, nothing brings out the best in people like a water shortage. The main strategies Cape Town is relying on first is drilling into untapped groundwater for usage, which is great if you're a fan of short term solutions to long term problems. News 24 reports that. Key partners are saying groundwater extraction isn't a possible solution, and when even the contractors are saying something is impossible, you have yourself a problem. One other solution to Cape Town's problem is investing in desalinization infrastructure. Now this wouldn't help with this specific drought, but if you had the inkling that this once in a millennium problem might happen again in a few years, this might seem like a good investment. Which, eerily enough, is something that the government is investing in. Right now though, it appears as though day zero is coming in March, so we'll see what happens there. Until then, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of Africa Wednesday, click here. Please like and subscribe, and if you're really a fan, you can join